ends the little prologue to this video. This is really for people who don't sew regularly but have access to a sewing machine or can get a hold of a needle, thread, and scissors so that they can do some basic alterations. So if you have been a longtime sewist, this may be not for you. But if you want to fit your clothes and you don't regularly sew, this is a very basic beginner. I will show you how to put in a dart in ready-to-wear pants in using a sewing machine or just by hand sewing it with needle and thread. Just a little caveat as we get started so you know who the video is for and if you know somebody who could use this information please share the video with them so that they can have good fit too. Okay let's go into the video. Today I'm going to just show you a very fast and easy alteration to make on a ready-to-wear pant to make it fit if you have a shape like I do. If you're hourglass, if you're small-waisted and big in the booty, especially small across your back, this is the alteration. Let me show you the pants. These are ready-to-wear pants. And if you have a figure like mine, you usually will have three to four inches in the waist. And it's really just in the waist and then immediately you're full in the rear, but your pants always stand out in the back like this. These are elastic waisted. It doesn't matter. They can be um, your zip front pant. It can be anything. I specifically like to do this on my jeans. If you have a back pocket like this, we're going to put darts right here. I forgot to say that the reason I choose this specific location and spacing is it looks the most intentional. It often looks like the pants came that way. It doesn't look like you added them later. I have noticed a lot of times when people put darts in themselves, they put them too close to the center back seam and angled, and it always looks homemade. It just does not look either professionally tailored or like the pants came that way. So use this spacing if you want it to look a little more polished, a little more finished, if you're gonna wear it to work. And it almost always misses the belt loop. So if you're doing this in pants or a skirt that has a belt loop, there's usually not a belt loop in this specific location and it makes it just easier for you to put it in. You don't have to measure really either if you just use the center back and side seam as your guide. Okay, back to sewing. On each side, they go down past the pocket, so inside the pocket, to take care of that fullness. Now, depending on your shape and the pant, you may need shorter darts or longer darts. For this one, you can see how it's really only in the waist. See how the waistband? It's waistband only, but I am gonna go ahead and make the dart. It'll be really skinny. So let's go over and do a really quick short dart. Sometimes there is a tag in the way, and if there is, I sew through the tag, honestly. You can also pull the tag off, put your dart and reattach the tag on one side if you want to. Either way works. We'll head over and look at that at the sewing machine and get these pants fixed because I need to wear them today. And whenever I wear my shirts, my long shirt, it bulks in the back because the pants too big. Need to take care of that. If you don't have access to a sewing machine, you can still do this. You need a hand sewing needle, an all-purpose thread that matches. This is just a dark navy and a pair of scissors, and we can still do the same alteration. Let me show you how. Okay, I'm just cut a length of thread, and I'm going to um, put it in my the eye of my needle. If you have a hard time seeing this, you can get little needle threaders to help, and sometimes I have to use one just because it doesn't want to go in. And you don't want your thread to be too long because it will not get knots and tangle up on you. So I'm gonna just show you. This um, is about 18 inches doubled over, so about 30, 36 inches worth of thread. I'm gonna use it doubled. So I'm gonna have, I have two, um, two threads that I will be stitching with. The thread's doubled. I'm gonna put a knot in one end. So I have a little tiny knot and we're going to go to our pants. So I am matching my center back to my side seam so that I kind of get my um, back pocket evenly dispersed and then I'm going to pull the pocket away so we don't want to stitch through it so my pockets back out of the way. Now if you're worried about not getting a straight line you can draw it on with some tailor's chalk or a mechanical pencil. Okay, so you can see my little yellow line. It's going to come just into the pocket just a little bit, and we're actually going to start down here in the point and work our way up. You could go either direction, though. All right, so I'm going to start right down here at my point, and I'm going to just get as close as I can to that very little point. Remember, I have a knot in my needle. 
so here's my knot and we're going to come backwards just a tiny bit because we want a nice fine point and I'm going to do a running stitch first and a running stitch is just sort of an in and out but we want to keep it pretty tight we don't want it to be very far apart our stitches need to be kind of close together and we're going to come back and lock those stitches in we're going to make them real tight so this is our first go and you can see I'm not making I'm not taking really big bites so on the top side let me take a couple more stitches so you can see. I'm going in and out real close to each other and just about a quarter of an inch over. So on the top side it looks like this. On the back side you can see how it's more filled in. And I'm going to go all the way up doing this and then I'm going to come back down and go in between there. Because what we don't want when you hand stitch is if your stitches are too far apart from the outside and I'll just show you from the outside here you can get some pull where you can really see where your stitches are can you see how that pulls so we want to make that as tight as possible so it doesn't pull and it looks um, intentional so I'm gonna go ahead and just complete my running stitch if you need to you can put a little clip in it if you don't have pins and things like that you can use one of those big clips like a big binder clip like you, you get from the office supply you might have one of those floating around you could even use a paper clip if you need to just to hold your layers together um, you can also get a very inexpensive little sewing kit at Walmart or at Target or at um, Hobby Lobby places like that for hand sewing to have on hand Sewing should be accessible for everyone. Not everyone will have a sewing machine, but see here's a little knot. So if you get that, it just means you're two layers separated and we'll just pull until it comes straight. Sometimes you have to pull your little stitches apart um, that are in the needle. Now here we've got like eight layers of thread and if it gets really tough, sometimes you need a pair of pliers almost, but this won't be that hard. You can actually, instead of going straight across, you might have to come in and out, poke from behind to get your stitch in. And this is where we're gonna really make sure we get it nice and tight when we come back through. So I'm just gonna work my way up and then I will show you my way back down here in just a second. Now, right here where the waistband starts, it's gonna get real thick again too. So we're going to do the in and out. Whoops, caught. The reason I'm poking in and out is because it's really thick right here and it's just harder and I'm using a pretty heavy needle, honestly. But where there's a lot of double layers of fabric, it's much easier to poke in and out than to try and do um, the running stitch side to side like I'm doing here. These areas it's really thick. Okay, so I'm when I get up here to the top I'm going to actually tie off my needle and I'm going to reload my thread for the way back. So you can see that in by going in and out it actually eats up quite a bit of thread. I'm doing it this it's just how it is. So we would rather reload our needle twice than have lots of knots that we have to um, work out as we go. Okay, right up here I'm going to tie off. I'm going to make sure my little top of my waistband is even. I'm going to come in and out a couple times. So thick. I'm going to push down on the table to get it to come through. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to tie up, make a little knot um, so it doesn't come out. And we'll reload our needle and do it again to make sure that we don't have our any stress. Because this is in the waistband, it will get stressed just from pulling them on and off. So there's my knot. And let me show you how it looks currently. So this is how it looks. We have a nice start in there. However, if it gets stressed, and it's not bad because I did it tight, but you can see, you can kind of see it. So I'm going to do a second row because I don't want my stitches to pop, but actually that didn't do too bad at all. Flip it over so you can see it from this side. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, we're going to do one more row. Um, I want to make sure they're nice and tight. Here's 
how it looks currently on both sides. Not perfect, you can see it's a little whoop, right through there, which is also inside the pocket, but I can even that out next go round. Okay, I've reloaded my needle, and we're going to, I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna kinda do the same thing. This was what was the back side before. I'm gonna start my needle down. I don't ever want my little knots to show <laughs> from the outside, so I'm gonna start down here. There's my knot. Move those scissors a bit, they're loud in the camera. And because I've matched my thread up so well, it's going to be a little hard to see, which is actually ideal. And it's really stiff right here. I usually keep um, pliers in my sewing room for hand sewing, things like this, because you just sometimes need pliers. It's very important to match your thread. And so when I poke through, I can see if I'm lined up well or not. And if not, I can repoke it because I haven't pulled it yet and I'm right in the middle of an old stitch which is where I want to be really trying to fill in and make it look nice and tight this is denim so it's nice and sturdy it'll take a lot of stitching without it hurting the fabric if you're doing this in something really delicate if you over stitch it actually sometimes the thread is stronger than the fibers that the garments made out of and it can actually tear your fabric so you need to um, think about the fabric and the thread. This is just an all-purpose polyester thread that I'm working with. If, and it's most likely you'll be altering in something like this. But if you were doing like a silk skirt, you want to use a cotton thread. It's better for silk than polyester. Polyester would not be the best choice. You can even go backwards. So here I just pulled in. I'm going to come back and fill in this little area where there's not a lot of stitching right in that waistband. I want to make sure it's tight. And don't worry if this line doesn't look perfect. What you want is for it to be fairly straight. You, if you get a weird bump out, it may show from the outside. But usually, it kind of just disappears. Okay, now I'm kind of doing a back stitch. You can see how it loops around going between my old stitches and if you can you see these little threads if you get that put your needle in and pull the threads just slightly and then you can pull from this end you don't want to break your threads so. though there we go and they'll pull right out and the reason I'm doing this twice is because this is a stretch pull on denim I don't want my threads snapping where I put the dart in and I want it to be nice and strong. Right here is really stiff because there's that yoke seam. All right, down here I had already started with some pretty tight stitches because it's easier because it's single layer. But you can see the stitching. Not going to be exactly beautiful, but it the more you sew, the more tidy your stitching will get. Getting back down. Now I sew all the way down into the pocket because it hides where I start and stop. It makes it look more like it was part of the pant to begin with. Now, if you sew and make your own clothes, this is going to be pretty basic and probably not how you would do it. This is really for those who don't sew but need to learn some basic alterations to get their clothes to fit better. And it will help you have a nice fit. Okay, so now I'm going to come back close to where I'm ending here. I'm going to go in and out of my stitch a few times to make a knot. Now, this is heavy fabric, so these knots will not show on the outside. If this is super soft, lightweight fabric, it would. So you need to think about those things. And now we're done with our dart. And it looks like this from the outside. All darted and ready to wear. 
and there you can see it all lined up and I was pretty careful I wanted to really keep my waistband straight so it looks fine and because I did my center back to my side seam when I do that again for this side I will have my darts evenly spaced which is what I did on the white pair too and you can have a better fitting pant or skirt anything that's fitted across the back like that all right I'm going to just do a little side by side I machine sewed this side and I hand sewed this side so you can just see the difference from the outside you're not going to see a difference when wearing it it's going to look the same Okay, so I take my pants, I really don't do a lot of measuring other than knowing about what I need to take in. And I will take the center back to the side seam, right sides together. And usually this avoids any um, belt loops, if you have belt loops. And that always gets me right in the pocket area there. And you can see I also have, I do have a, a tag, but it's a tag that's been just like glued on. So now that I've done that, I'm going to take and make sure my pockets pulled back out of the way. So the pockets up and open and out of the way. And now I can come in and do a dart in here. And the main thing is you want to do the dart on both sides. I'm going to do this exact same, same thing twice. So at the top, I'm going to take in about an inch at the top, which makes a two inch dart. And for me, it could end in this it could end in this uh, waistband because of the fit of these pants, but you don't want a bubble. So a lot of times if I have to do a lot at the top, I'll make a really long skinny dart that goes through the yoke and everything into the top of the pocket. And it sort of just makes it look like it was always supposed to be there. Okay, so I am underneath. I've got everything lined up in my pocket out of the way. One of the most important things you need to do is really backstitch when you get this thing started because it takes a lot of pull. Once you get it started, then I'm gonna come down and you, here's my, you can draw this on with a pencil if you want to. Here's the top of my pocket so I know we'll kind of where to end. I'm gonna do a super long, skinny. I'm going slow because there's a lot of layers here. And if you need to, like in this area, you may need to come and do a little extra back stitching. Long and skinny. It can even be shaped if you've got a really round, peachy bottom. All you don't, you just don't want to make an extra bubble there. Now my end of my dart is in my pocket. Okay, so when I am done, here's my side seam. Wait, wait. Yeah, here's my side seam. Here's my center back. Here's my pocket and you can see the dart. If you're careful, it lines up nicely. Sometimes this is the place where it's not gonna line up perfectly, but just the shaping of a yoke will do that. But it's actually not bad at all. And honestly, I always have a shirt tail over it. For me, you may not, but that's it. That's how it's done. If you have to do a whole lot, your pockets might stick out. Mine never do, because my rear end fills all that in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the other dart on the other side and try it on and show you how differently it fits. Okay, there are my two matching darts. Let's go try it on. Okay, let's look at how it is finished. I'm gonna back up. So it is from the front and you can see, tuck in my shirt a little bit. You can see, follows my shape. I'm gonna turn to the side, tucks in. It's not standing straight out. And there it is from behind. The view I don't like to give, but fits so much better now. This is the cheater method. You definitely can take the waistband off. At, like on this one, it has side seams on the waistband. I could definitely take it apart of the side seam and take it in and put it back together. That's the best way to do it. And I will do a video on how to do that for a pair of jeans where you rip out the whole center back and part of the yoke, etc., to do the alteration. I'll do that someday. But today I gotta wear these in another hour. So I thought I'd show you real quick as I got myself ready to go. Okay, I'll see you again for another fun video very soon.